We're missing one person. Good evening, everyone. This is a great uh, size crowd, and thank you for coming out uh, this evening and really taking uh, the initiative and being proactive on, on what we all know is really a key topic facing all of our communities, and that is disaster preparedness. I want to start by thanking the Marinwood Lions, uh, Elaine, uh, the CERT Steering Committee, uh, for doing so much for our communities behind the scenes. If you can join me in a round of applause. We know that disaster preparedness has been at the top of everyone's mind, and the issue was really put squarely uh, to our board of supervisors a while back by Fire Chief Jason Weber. 
when he noted that we now live in virtually a year-round fire season. Uh, this is a, a, or at least one where there are significantly longer uh, fire seasons than in what was previously normal. We have been reminded of this fact repeatedly this year as major fires broke out throughout California. And Moran is certainly not immune uh, from this issue given our topography and vegetation. And the Board of Supervisors made the decision this year to actually ramp up our budget specifically toward uh, disaster preparedness. The effort starts with making sure that um, all the agencies that are relevant throughout the county are in sync, uh, that they're coordinated and uh, communicating with each other, that our communication systems are working and effective, and that we uh, have neighborhoods and individual residents that are engaged and also uh, coordinated with the whole system. Research shows that in the face of major climate events like fire and flooding, neighborhoods where people know each other and look out for each other have the lowest mortality rates and recover more quickly. We actually saw this firsthand in the aftermath of last October uh, with the Sonoma Strong effort and the Marine County response to our neighbors and colleagues to the north. The support we offered was not only the right thing to do, but also was done with local people, local businesses, and was done immediately. When we build community in good times, we are more resilient when disaster strikes. We build, and we, again, we build community by talking to each other and engaging. So um, I'm really proud to know that the groundwork has been laid for disaster preparedness with two neighborhood firewise communities right here uh, locally. Uh, Lucas Valley Homeowners Association and the Mont Marine Centerfield Park neighborhoods have formed firewise communities this year. So what are the, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I think that can really be a model for other uh, communities throughout our region. So what do we mean by that? Well, FireWise program involves local homeowners in taking individual responsibility for preparing their homes uh, from the risk of wildfire. The program provides resources to help homeowners and encourages neighbors to work together to take action and prevent losses. Insurance discounts may be available to FireWise organized communities as well as potential access to funding. In addition, last month I had the opportunity to actually take a first-hand tour of some of the activities that are going on locally here uh, in our neighborhoods. Part of this is I'm, I'm really getting up to speed myself and kind of a crash course um, in educating around these issues. So again, thank you to Marine County Fire Department officials, including Christy Neal and Chief Weber. Uh, Chief Gray of the Centerfell Fire Department uh, joined us. Parks and Open Space uh, was there as well, and Fire Safe Moran. Of course, many of you may have also seen that Dick Spotswood, the columnist, joined us and, and kind of uh, wrote up an article uh, on it. So again, all, all the different agencies um, working together. Uh, also, a huge shout out to Frank Cox, who's spearheading uh, the Mont Marin Firewise effort, and Kelby Jones from Lucas Valley. Our group toured Queenstone Drive nearby here and saw the collaboration firsthand. Uh, specifically, the TAM fire crew created a fuel break along the fire road and regarded the fire uh, and regraded the fire road after it was heavily damaged in previous winter storms. The Marinwood CSD and County Fire Department split the cost of the vegetation management product uh, project, excuse me, and the County Fire Department provided the personnel for regrading and Marinwood CSD paid for equipment. Uh, and the cost of the geologist, so great cooperation. Through the joint effort, the fire road was kept open. There are a few additional other local projects. 53 homes participated in a chipper day 
uh, through CSA 13 with over 100 tons of material removed. Marin County Parks and Open Space, CSA 13 and Rotary uh, Senior Village and Marinewood Fire Department collaborated on vegetation management on Mount Lassen Drive, which is one of three major escape routes for CSA 13. A 100-foot fuel break was done at the end of Valley Stone Drive, and two additional chip bids were held in Marinewood with over 30 homes participating. Uh, again, these are activities that are going around throughout the county in this coordinated way. Uh, so just a couple other things, I have a couple more minutes. Uh, the field surrounding Juvenile Hall, I've heard some specific issues around that, I'm seeing some nods in the crowd. Uh, so County Open Space met with Marinwood Fire, County Fire, and community members and walk through the mowing strategy with respect to the field. And if you have any questions on this, please uh, uh, follow up. Uh, so vegetation management requires that fields are not mowed during nesting season. So there's a habitat issue going on there as well. Uh, so basically we're balancing those needs. So another big, uh, initiative right now, as you may have heard, uh, is that Satterfeld Fire Department is actually taking over management responsibilities for uh, Marinwood Fire. We give Fire Chief Roach a hearty uh, mm -hmm. farewell and best wishes in his retirement. He did a great job. I think we're actually going to have a really good leadership team coming in under uh, Chief Gray. And uh, very much looking forward to that. So, on, again, to uh, reiterate on the individual level, uh, I encourage you to learn what you can do at your home to maintain defensible space. Learn about your neighbors. Um, oftentimes, as we've seen in these disasters, the elderly resident next to us, uh, if we get to know them, we're in a better position uh, to offer help. Uh, I encourage you to also learn more about what we're calling Drawdown Marin. It's an environmental initiative we're very excited about uh, that is actually putting uh, our climate change initiatives into bold action. If you're interested in learning more and getting involved, please contact my office. And finally, uh, I encourage you in that vein to uh, feel free to uh, stop by the Civic Center anytime, um, sign up for my newsletters, uh, please follow me on Facebook or Twitter if that's something you do, uh, and we kind of list our priorities um, uh, on our website, um, and one key one again is what we need to do toward uh, being prepared for disaster. So thank you again, it's really a privilege to represent this area. Uh, I signed up for another four years by virtue of the election in June. Thank you. Uh, running unopposed was, was not too bad in this instance, but never take it for granted. So thank you again. Five seconds if anybody has a question. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. About the meadow in front of the juvenile hall. Yes. When is it hasn't been cut in four or five years, and when is the nesting season for birds? I'm not aware of a specific answer to that. Um, I understand that. Um, so. Yeah. So, Chief Gray, you want to. Okay, yeah, so it's, it's in process in terms of uh, being figured out, so. So hopefully it will be cut down. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, another fire hazard that's particularly of interest to us because we live along it is our creek, and the creek path has become very overgrown. There's a ton of dead wood in there and trees coming down. Um, how would we address that with the fire department and the CSD to make that a priority through these programs to get them cleared out? Absolutely. We can also follow up on that. I kind of made a note to myself, though, that is not as simple as it may sound. 
um, right. to say the least, and get this to start out with. To actually clear vegetation in Miller Creek would require sequel. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, so this includes a way of fire risks in the environment. Uh, and again, I think firewise is a, is a, a vehicle to kind of get into the proverbial weeds on that kind of issue, uh, no pun intended. Um, but again, I think that's something we can really uh, continue to work with you on. Can you explain what CEQA is? Thank you. Uh, California Environmental Quality Act. It's a state law that actually, any time you undertake as a government, a local government, a project that may impact the environment, it requires a detailed study and analysis on a variety of uh, efforts. <coughs> I know, I, I, I hear the I mean, frustration. It's almost any time you touch a creek, it's going to require some analysis. <laughs> so that puts all our houses that are in danger. at risk waiting for yeah, all There is so much kidney behind us, you can't even imagine. Absolutely. We need to get on it, and I'm, I'm seeing nods that there we are. Four, um, two. Um, so it sounds like Mockerin and Lucas Valley. Firewise program. Yes. I did not hear that Marin Wood does. Doesn't. So, how do we go about having that? Uh, maybe someone else will address that. The challenge is most of the places that have these programs have 550 homes. We have 1,770. That's very challenging to organize that. That having been said, follow, my time's up. Follow up. Yes, yeah, yeah. one more question. I live, live on Cedarbury Lane for many years. Yes. And there's a home at, at the end of Cedarbury, it's on a cross street. But um, I know they've had some um, disasters in the family. The husband was a probation officer and he took his life. And so um, the family is still living there uh, and the weeds <coughs> are just growing up high, high, high. Uh, you know, and, and is anybody from Marinwood Community Center coming around to say you have to cut those So down? that's a great example. So you, you've noticed that now, Oh yeah. Uh, as you should. Uh, reach out um, and let us know and then we'll follow up. For you sure. just did. Okay, so that one. To the community center? You just did reach out. To the okay, fire department. Yeah. Fire department. So this is, oh. the, this is the system at work. <laughs> All right. Hey, Maggie, you're next. Thank you. Thank you. I wish we had more time. My name is Maggie Lang, and I have the pleasure of coordinating the CERT program for Marin County. How many CERT members are here tonight? Oh, that's good. Thank you. CERT is Community Emergency Response Team. It's a national program under FEMA and Citizens Corps. Uh, there are probably 650 CERTs in the country, CERT groups in every state. It started in Los Angeles about 30, over 30 years ago. And it's a uh, program that provides special skills for residents, anyone, 14 to 90 years old, go through the classes uh, in Marin. And it gives you skills so that as we step forward to help each other, which we know will happen in all disasters, we all forget our little grudges in the neighborhood and we help each other, which is what we should do. But what the observation is, is that sometimes people get themselves hurt doing that. So the program was started in order to provide skills so that you can stay safe. So the idea is we want everyone to be a survivor, not another victim, and that's what the CERT program does. So we have training, it's an 18 hour training. We offer 10 to 12 classes a year all around um, the county and um, provide those skills in fire suppression, putting out small fires with a fire extinguisher. How many of y'all have never used a fire extinguisher? <laughs> I hadn't either. I had never used fire extinguisher before I took them home. So it's wonderfully empowering to see how you use a fire extinguisher in something so simple, a small fire that can become a big fire. 
Uh, we also learned about what are the ways of looking at a building if we hear our neighbor yelling from inside after an earthquake and is it safe for us to go in. We don't want to just charge in and again become another victim in an aftershock. Uh, we talk about disaster psychology. If you're stepping forward after a disaster to help your neighbors, they've been through a traumatic event, as have you. And how do you help yourself and support yourself and your team? Because we always work, we use the buddy system, we always work as a team, as well as the folks that you're stepping forward to help. What are the things we think about when we're supporting people? We talk about first aid, and this is first aid with a perspective on our wonderful fire department and paramedics will not be there in four minutes. So if we're in a post-earthquake situation, it may be some time before we have our professionals arrive. And that's what CERTs are. We're there between the event and when our professionals arrive. We are not professional responders. We're called citizen first responders. So we talked about first aid, search and rescue, disaster psychology, a little bit of terrorism which is just understanding what the things to look for, not that there's necessarily a role for your average resident in a terrorist response. So I present that as a program for everyone. Anyone here is welcome to join. There's a role for everyone in CERT. And we recertify every four years. Elaine was mentioning we'll be in the back. Any of you CERTs who had, took it over four years ago, you need to recertify, which is very simple that reactivates your disaster service worker status so you are covered by workers' comp. If you are in injured in a declared local disaster or in a training. So we want to make sure that you're covered in that situation. And I, and I want to just take a short time and see if there are questions that you have. We have sign-ups in the back. Uh, we've completed our classes for the year, but we'll start again in February. We'd like to set a goal of one certain member for every 20 households. So on your street, we'd love to have folks who have special skills who can um, check in with, how, with neighbors, just go door to door. Your responsibility is yourself and your family first and your immediate neighbors. And if you choose to step forward and check on a broader scope in some communities, there are some guidelines. There are guidelines for that. So one certain number of 20 households, I encourage everybody to take it. There's a role for everyone. Um, we've had folks who come in with mobility issues and they've assumed roles that have been incredibly helpful. So I wanted to see if there were any questions you have. <clears throat> Some of the brochures we have in the back, we encourage everyone to sign up for Alert Marin, which is our not reverse 911 notification for the county and the flyers are in the back. So you want to know something's happening, you want the very first uh, important information to come out to you so you know how to respond. We also have some brochures for the program and ask that you pick one up and give it to one person or take it home yourself. And we also have some cards that have um, the months of the schedule for every year that is saved. The dates will be different for 2019 we'll start again in February. So I wanted to see if you have any questions and I'm going to come out there and talk to you. So there's so basically two tracks. One is that you stay at home, shelter in place for five to seven days, such as post-earthquake. Your home may be not quite okay to go back in, but your property may be safe. So you may be uh, camping out. How many of y'all are campers and have camping gear? So that's an excellent beginning to your emergency supplies. You may be camping out on your back door. And the other is evacuation. So if you have to go, go early. Don't wait for the mandatory <coughs> evacuation notice, but leave early and think about what you're going to take with you. So those are two tracks that we've spent a lot of time talking about. Thank you. Any other questions? It's great to be with you. Thank you. Maybe, um, up until this point, we've been thinking about earthquakes as being a certain event where, where uh, 
when the uh, first responders are preoccupied and, and so we have to sort of fend for ourselves and use our search training to help, help, <coughs> help our neighbors, ourselves. right. But now with the advent of the fire seasons we had uh, a couple of years, uh, we're all thinking about wildfire. And so I'm wondering what your thoughts are on the role of search in the event of a major wildfire. Right. There's not, um, we should do a joint talk here. But um, there's not a, a real role for certs in a response to a fire. But what happened last fall is we had a lot of people who wanted to help. A lot of people who wanted to volunteer, and that includes certs. So we had some certs who were working in Red Cross shelters, for example. Um, there were certs who worked up in Napa uh, in an emergency volunteer center who were coordinating folks who showed up wanting to help. So those are support roles. I think the main thing that we think about with CERT is make sure your neighbors have a plan and that if you are evacuating, know two ways to get out of your neighborhood, uh, two directions and two modes, they say. You may be walking, you may be driving, you might be riding a bicycle. So those are all things to take care of our neighbors and that is sort of public education and response. So we don't really have an official role in a fire response, but we have a support role. Elaine says I have to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Meg. This is a good segue into, uh, into uh, what we're going to talk about. I'm Cameron Case, my partner, Dave Miles. Uh, I'm of the Las Salinas Lions Club, and I'm the liaison to Marinewood CERT. And about, oh, maybe 10 plus years ago, time does fly. A group of lions uh, were aware of the uh, OAS in San Rafael, Office of Emergency Services, was uh, providing training for earthquake preparedness. And so we participated in the class and got trained and qualified. And, uh, and shortly thereafter, uh, John Hammond, who just spoke a minute ago, raise your hand, John, give you credit. Uh, John became our CERT chair uh, within the Lions Club, and we quickly realized the importance uh, bringing this out to the community. So as of now, we are the sustaining sponsor for Marinewood CERT, working with the, com with the community. Uh, and Amy and Jeannie, the, most of the committee now is not Lions, it's community-based. So uh, having said that, uh, the challenge was, how do we get out to the community? So John, a number of years ago, said let's divide it into workable solutions. Uh, we're 1,700 homes, 6,000 people. We divided it into CERT areas, of which we have 40-some CERT areas, and you can see that in the back of the room. Uh, the important thing is, moving forward, we began in collaboration with uh, Marinewood Fire Engine 58 with the CSD, Dan Connolly with the county, and the Lions Club in coming up with some funding for the emergency trailer that sits on the side of the uh, firehouse now. So having said that, uh, I'm a member of CERT Area 18, of which I believe is on Miller Creek at 596, going up to Queenstone, and I think we have probably six or seven CERT trained people in that area. Um, having said that, Dave Miles. Okay. Yeah, well, thanks, Cameron. And uh, as Cameron says, we're a volunteer group, so we appreciate uh, everybody volunteering, and we'll take anybody we can. And just help the participation. We have a steering committee, about nine people. We meet every other month or so, and then, but we're interested in the, the grassroots of just your neighbors also. So uh, there's a few things that went on uh, behind the scenes here for the last couple of years. Uh, just, I'll just go over a few of them. And by the way, at the end of the meeting, back in the uh, back of the table, we have uh, various uh, uh, handouts that are very handy for all that sort of thing. But um, the main thing we created after John Hammond's good work, uh, the CERT area maps, and there's the big laminated map on the corner. There's about 40 areas, each with 40 homes. So, uh, and we have a notebook that, and you can get and look at this on the uh, MarinwoodCERT.com uh, website, and you can go to maps. You can find out your address and find out what CERT area you're in. Uh, we created the CERT trailer through the funding finance through uh, Engine Company 58, the county through Damon's uh, help and the Lions Club and we finance that nice search trailer that stands on the uh, far side of the firehouse over here and it's pretty fully equipped already. We've sponsored Get Ready classes and we've held them here at the Marinwood Community Center and elsewhere. Uh, there's been several block parties uh, with 
certain areas, 26, 30, 31, and 18. And we've updated our master list of certified residents within the community with the help of Diane Ayers. We've had numerous radio checks. We have a radio room uh, in the firehouse uh, for the civilian radios, and we have about at least a dozen or more walkie-talkies in the CERT trailer. We can always go over those details at other meetings when anybody wants to volunteer. Uh, we man a CERT booth on July 4th at our Burnwood breakfast here, and we man a CERT booth uh, in the September car show sponsored by the Lions Club. We've also sponsored First Aid for Disaster Response, which is FADER, uh, helped out by our, uh, the Maroonwood, uh, or the uh, community, um, medical medical the Medical Reserve uh, Corps, yes. And that's, that's why they have got that, that session down. So there'll be another one coming back, and I think maybe Maggie or Diane will have the, the next one of those coming up. Uh, some of us have canvassed the area, uh, Cameron went around last year and handed out a lot of uh, little handouts for our neighbors in each little area. And we had a very good drill about one year ago here. It was a tri-community radio drill. It was Marin Wood, it was uh, Mount Marin, and Lucas Valley. And uh, it was all cooperation. Uh, it took about most of the morning, and we uh, did a simulated tabletop, and uh, actual emergencies were radio in, and uh, we prioritized those, and then we uh, would send it upstairs and uh, gave a synopsis to the, the, the firefighters and whoever could really help us out. And we will try to continue some of these drills in the future. Again, we are a volunteer organization. In, uh, in a couple of minutes, uh, or a minute here, uh, Cameron and I will do about a minute and a half skit just to bore you a little bit. And it's just, uh, it's grassroots. If you want to be a, a slight leader, you don't have to think about 40 homes to tackle and meet all your neighbors. Maybe just meet uh, one, two, three, or four of your neighbors. And uh, we, we have a couple of sheets that are in the back room. And, uh, you know, one of them uh, is about introducing yourself to that to the neighborhood, and you can just fill in your, your address, and it tells what CERT's generally about, and how we can actually help your neighbor, because the first responders aren't gonna be there. So it's neighbor helping neighbor. So you can get one of these in the back room, and then we can gather just a little uh, data about your neighbor, so you know how many pets they have. Uh, you know, maybe their own emergency uh, number for somebody out of state or whatever. If they have a swimming pool or any other, or if they're into amateur radio or whatever, we've got a check-off sheet for that. So, so now uh, Cameron and I are going to do a little little demo of what that might be like as uh, he introduces himself to one of his neighbors. Stand by. My neighbor's a little strange, but I'm going to knock on his door. <laughs> <laughs> He's also theatrically minded, and I'm not. He's a straight man. street to that street. 
Uh, our goal is to identify neighbors, uh, finding out if they have any special special needs, and if by any chance you have any special skills. I don't know them yet, but if you have any special skills. Um, in any event, and then also, uh, by the way, uh, you have a, uh, do you know how to cut off, turn off your gas valve? No, no, but, but, but you know, I'm off Cameron, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm a very private person, really, and, and I, I thought, I don't want any of you people coming by and asking me about all this disaster preparedness stuff. I, I don't want to be bothered, but I don't know, after you gave me your little spiel here, I, I think maybe it's a good idea. So, so I mean, I mean, so say that there's an earthquake and, and my big TV falls on me on my head and everything. One of you guys might come and take the TV off my head. You bet, Dave. We'll do that. Oh well, okay. Then, then that, that's okay. Right, Dave. Do you know how to turn off your gas valve? No. All right. Hey, do you have a minute? I can, no, I, I got to be somewhere right now. But uh, <laughs> uh, how about tomorrow? Ten o'clock tomorrow. Can we get? Can I stop by then? Yeah, yeah. Ten o'clock tomorrow. That that'd be good. Yeah. Make sure you have your shoes on. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, hey, Cameron. Um, yeah. Thank you. And, and, and thanks for coming by. Uh, you know, I, I think this stuff is a good idea. It is a good idea, Dave. We want to take care of you, your family, and any loved ones. And if there's somebody that maybe you need that we don't know and you know, maybe you can help. Maybe I can help too. Okay. Thanks. See you tomorrow. <laughs> receive a PG&E safety alert tonight? No. Not one of you. Not one of you. What was it notifying you about? They may turn off power tomorrow. Oh, they might turn off. They might turn off the power tomorrow. Right. So you see this, this is a CPUC Public Utility Commission map in this red area. This is Marinwood right here in this red area. It's called a Tier 3. So learn if your power may be shut off for Safety during high wildfire threats. I just typed in 777 Miller Creek Road, and what did it say? Would you do 596? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your location is served by PG&E and an electric line that runs through an extreme fire threat. For safety, it may be shut off. So this is within a Tier 3 area, and you have the possibility of having the power shut off tomorrow because a red flag alert actually starts formally at 10 p.m., but I can tell you within Marin, we have provided additional staffing on five engines that was approved through the California Office of Emergency Services and coordinated through the Marin County Fire Department. So in San Rafael and Marinwood, we have staffed an additional engine that is uh, with four firefighters that is available to us. And if you've heard this term about pre-positioning, so that what happens after disasters? reaction and so part of the 30 pieces of legislation that have passed and a flurry of activity over the past year in response to 40 plus deaths and and 10,000 structures being lost and billions of dollars in damage um, are some sweeping uh, changes and one of them uh, during high fire conditions really allows two things and that is pre-positioning increasing staffing of uh, fire engines 
and also this coordination with PG&E to actually de-energize power that is likely to fail during a wind st uh, storm. So hopefully a combination of all of these things will help us uh, do a better job. Um, I can tell you that um, you know, the big question is, you know, are we disaster resistant? How well are we prepared for a similar event? Uh, the difference likely on that evening um, was probably wind speed, but most likely ignition. We failed to have an ignition source that night. Um, life was present uh, in further North Bay and uh, Sonoma and Napa. Um, there were over 100 mile an hour wind speeds generated when the Tubbs fire initiated and came rolling over the hill into Santa Rosa. Now, fire knows no boundaries, so it didn't stop at anything. That fire actually had occurred uh, decades before uh, what was the difference? Uh, more fuel had uh, grown and died off, and a lot more houses had been built in its path. And so fire did what it does, and it took out just about everything in its, in its path. And so how do we become more disaster resistant? As Elaine said, it's not a question of if, but when. So the pre-positioning pre has helped, but wildfire prevention is, can be very helpful. So there's a combination of things that we can assist you with, and I, I love the group, and um, the coordination, the collaboration, and the help. And we really are here. That's why we are in a place uh, here in the community. You have two of uh, the three firefighters that are on duty here. Captain Ryan uh, Brackett is here in the back from Marinwood, and also firefighter paramedic uh, Wills Kelly. So thank you both for being here. <laughs> But well, we're going to con uh, continue to experience climate change, as we all know about. And you know, part of the difficulty with that is recognizing that what's going to occur here locally and what can you do in advance. The best work is done before the fire, and it will occur. And so part of that is, if you do everything right and your neighbor does nothing, you're at risk and the neighborhood is at, is at risk. One of the benefits of FireWise, and we're working now to help coordinate an effort that will have Marinwood become a FireWise community, is it's peer pressure. And it's also the relationships that are built through the process and having the additional availability of grant funding to assist us with vegetation efforts and really removal of tons and tons of vegetation. Um, also, hardening your home and figuring out what went wrong. Um, our emergency manager, Quinn Gardner, uh, by the way, you know, San Rafael has a number of full-time staff members, and uh, I really enjoyed working with Chief Roach and uh, wish him well in retirement. But we have, uh, there are six chief officers in San Rafael that are all at your service. In addition to Marshall, there's another vegetation management specialist, two fire prevention inspectors, um, and we have both a full-time emergency manager and an environmental uh, management coordinator. So there's a, they're all here for you. So that's part of the benefit of the relationship of uh, sharing services. So homes were part of the combustible landscape of the big fires. And, and where did the majority of those fires really come from? It was home to home. It was a conflagration. It was a firestorm. And truly, they were fire brands that caused the majority of those fires. They landed on homes, around homes, and they found points of vulnerability. That's what they do. And so trying to create a more defensible space around your home. And, and what do we do? What do we do each and every day when we call 911? You make, we make house calls. So I'm to here to tell you that we make house calls for non-emergencies too. We'll come out and take a look at your home in conjunction with the engine company and our staff. And we'll give you a prescription of how well your home, how well your neighborhood is going to stack up when the fire that, that comes uh, hits. And so hopefully we can help you prepare for that. There's some legislative changes that are in the works. You're going to see some code changes. Some are going to apply retroactively. You had a, anybody here have a wood shake roof? That's good. Uh, <laughs> does anyone here have uh, any plants that are uh, immediately adjacent to their home? Mm -hmm. yeah. Does anyone have any, anywhere near pine trees, eucalyptus trees? And we can go on and on and name the things that are there. So we can help you with a plan and not one that's going to denude 
all your landscaping, but hopefully to do it right and allow both you uh, and your loved ones in your home a chance to survive. So there's a lot of uh, good tips we can provide, and, and I, what I'd like to do in the future is schedule a session and we'll directly talk about homes and go through uh, some of what worked and what didn't um, that I think will be helpful. I also wanted to give a, a little bit of since my time is done, um, but I'm going to take a little bit of Quinn's time, uh, who was <laughs> supposed to go next, to talk a little bit about the earthquake. because. Uh, much in the same, there is no warning, and uh, you heard repeatedly about Alert Marin. If you haven't done so, please sign up to make sure you're going to be notified. Don't expect that you're going to, you know, someone may come knocking at your door. And so you know, so we talked about the 1,700 homes, the 6,000 people that live in Marinwood. How many firefighters are on duty? 24-7. Three. There are three. How many are on duty in San Rafael? 24-7. 23. So we've got 26 firefighters and we've got seven fire engines to essentially protect our community that are immediately available that we know we can always count on. Tonight, we have one more. So we're actually bumped the number to 30. Um, and we'll have that for the next 24 hours. And the nice thing about it is the state's actually going to reimburse us for that cost. Um, but all of this is risk management. And so what we want to do is that earthquake's not going to give you a warning, but we also need to look at hardening our homes by preparing ourselves and our neighborhoods so we can really help each other. So sign up for the alerts, have a plan, have a go bag, and all of this translates because what happened, some of the tragic stories that came out of the Bay Area were literally, what did people bring with them when they really had to run out the door? And they thought about it, well, I grabbed this and I grabbed that, but I forgot everything that was really important to me. So if you've got that done in advance, um, that's a huge advantage. Um, and the main thing is don't delay. When you do get the order, and I think one of the things, what happened down in, in uh, Montecito near Santa Barbara? Did you hear about the creek and one side or the other and a man mandatory and an advisory evacuation? If you, if you receive an evacuation notice, whether it's advisory or mandatory, take what you need and go. It can all be replaced. I mean, yes, things are very, possessions are very dear but we can't replace you. So heed the advice of the professionals and, and go um, and be prepared to do that. So I think in, in a lot of ways, um, and just summarizing, there are uh, additional classes that are going to be available. Maggie mentioned a schedule. I don't want to limit ourselves to a schedule or specific means. If there's a need to put on a class and we have enough interest, we'll figure out a way to put on a class. Um, whether we do that in a weekend, whether we do it in a two-hour block, or whether we do when we come to you and we come to the neighborhood and do it. So we want to make sure we take full advantage of the great cooperation amongst the neighborhood and see that we work all uh, together through this because that's what it's going to take. We'll do our absolute best and literally give our lives for others uh, to help, but it's not going to be enough if this big fire really does come our way. So. Uh, again, my, uh, my card's here, my cell phone's on there, call me anytime, um, we're here to help, and I'm really glad you're taking these additional steps, and it's uh, great to see you all. So, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, what number do we call for that house call? So, does everyone have... Does everyone have the number of the Marinwood Fire Department? Okay. Yeah. Just the Ryan, Captain Brackett. So what number would be, if people called and they wanted assistance, because we're going to give out several numbers, and we're going to also put some things on the website to give you some information. But what, what would be a good number to call, Captain Brackett? So 4790122. 4790122. Now, if you live you don't live in Marinwood, if you live in Upper Lucas Valley, would it be the same number? It doesn't. It doesn't. Here's the great thing. You know, for years, since 1980s, uh, San Rafael has actually provided all the paramedic service for you, right? We provided it to four political entities, the two CSAs, 19 to 13, and San Rafael and Marinwood. Fires, emergencies, they don't know any boundaries, and I don't think this type of uh, pre-planning, prevention, disaster preparedness should matter either. It's not where you live. We, we'll handle all of that, and that's all covered. 
you know, you're actually, if you live in Upper Lucas Valley, um, under contract, you're provided fire rescue and paramedic services by Marinwood and San Rafael uh, and supported by the county. So we're, it's all the same and we want to be able to help you. Yes. Uh, Chief, over the last 50 years, there have been two major fires yes. uh, on this hill up here. Yes. And uh, fortunately, in, in neither case did any house burn. Uh, we were fortunate because there weren't any big fires going on anywhere else, and the bombers came in real fast and took care of it. Right. Uh, but it's been about 20 years since the last fire. And what's up there now is an awful lot of dead wood and underbrush. It's really thick. Is there any hope of having something done about that? I believe there is, and much like this, the Hanley fire that occurred in, in Santa Rosa, same kind of conditions. Well, it hadn't burned in 50 years, and what had been done since then to thin and actually create breaks. So now more than ever, I must say that we've got a fantastic cooperation with Marin County Open Space that is actually cooperatively working with fire agencies. We do have an overall strategy and plan, part of what Supervisor Conley talked about was an effort that we're coordinating. We're actually mapping these areas. They're mapping the vegetation. They're determining the age of that vegetation, where the uh, highest priority should be, and then whether it's the TAM crew or other methods. Um, and in some cases, whether we're, we're, uh, we're removing the stuff mechanically, we're collecting it, and then we're burn piles that we can burn in the winter months. Hopefully, we continue to have rain. Um, that we'll be doing that. But we absolutely want to do that and I recognize that threat. And that's primarily the reason uh, that this is a red zone uh, for the CPUC and PG&E uh, be because of that fire history. Uh, that's exactly right. So, and we're committed to do that. Thank you, yes. I live on Las Colinas which backs up to Roundtree. Right. And that drainage ditch on my side is full of growth. And I don't know who to call. Uh, can the fire department do something about it? So you just did. You just reported it, and we're taking it. <laughs> and not only is it a fire issue, it's also a flood control issue. So, uh, and we're not we're not about pointing fingers. That's the best thing to know about the fire department. If you've got some kind of problem, I encourage you to call the fire department because we usually try to figure it out versus, well, you know what, you're going to have to go file a claim or call somebody else, something like that. We're really trying to work. So we'll uh, we'll check that out and see what we can do to help solve that. Hi. Yes? Uh, okay. I just uh, understood that, um, um, and I thought I read about it in the paper recently, that um, um, our uh, Marinwood Fire Department is losing more um, Help and er, because we're going to be uh, connected to San Rafael, mm -hmm. so we, we're not going to have as you said three persons well, here. Yeah, actually, um, Marinwood just made a move to bolster uh, the support. So actually, you uh, you multiplied your, your effort and, and staffing and support. So oh, they, they actually made a, a very positive move. Oh, good. I believe. Thank so you. That's all in the best interest of the community. Okay, thank you. Okay, one last one. Okay, so just to go but back. I'll, but I'll be here. <laughs> to go back to the creek, if those of us who live along the creek, we all, you know, call and arrange to have uh, inspections of our property and the adjacent property, which is the CSD property along the creek, is that, would that help in making the fire department really aware of what the, the dead wood back there? And how it would. My dad always told me to under promise and over deliver. Okay. But I'll, <laughs> we'll, what, I, what I promise to do is make sure we complete an assessment and figure out within the means of the law and available without triggering CEQA right. what exactly we can do to improve the fire safety of that area. Right. So we've taken note of it and we'll, we'll check it out. Great, thank you. Yeah. Because I'm afraid actually that, because I lived in the same area there. Right. Thank you. If the fire starts through there, the 100 foot defensible space is, is right. It's meaningless. It's, it's meaningless. meaningless. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, There's so much fuel. There's right. I mean, so right. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's you know one, one, one bite at a, one bite at a time, and we'll have to figure out what exactly we can do. So thank you. And, and we did have we called Luke with Marinwood, and he brought out the old chief, and we were told nothing could be done. Okay. So. There's no money. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I want.
Alex is completely saying nothing can be done and it's not in my vocabulary, but I, I'm, I can't quite imagine that there's a situation where nothing can be done. So anyway, we'll do our best. Thank you very much. I'm a fire inspector with the city of Santa Fe. Uh, ten years ago, ironically, you probably say CERT uh, got me here where I'm standing today, but it's more lack thereof CERT in Sonoma County because they didn't have a CERT program and decided to be firefighters instead. Um, so I encourage all of you that don't want to take CERT, go on to the fire academy and see. I can guarantee one thing though, there's definitely no uh, um, skits in the fire academy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're missing out. Yeah. <laughs> we need some humor. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I'm a fire inspector for the city of Santa Fe, and now I get the honor of coming over here and doing some um, general inspections and, and assistance in vegetation management in Marinwood, CSA 13, up in Lucas Valley. Um, real quick, can I get a show of hands if anyone doesn't know what the word buoy is? What? Buoy. W U I. The Wildland Urban Interface is really what we're focusing on. That's the area that I really focus within. Um, all of uh, Marin Wood actually is not wildland urban interface. There's a pocket of about, actually probably about 100 to 120 homes out of the 1,700 to 1,770 homes there are. Um, that, sorry, that are not within the wildland urban interface. Uh, so the wildland urban interface is just where homes have been built in a dense population within or abutting um, open space area, which is the exact description of this entire area, all the way up Lucas Valley and across Lucas Valley and Mont Marin. Um, so we're very familiar in Marin County with wildland urban interface, and so much so that 10 years ago, or give or take, the county drew up boundary lines defining where the wildland urban interface is. And that's where we get that little pocket within Marin CSE where there is no actual wildland inter urban interface. But as Chief Gray mentioned, uh, fires, emergency disasters, they don't know any sort of boundary. So um, the wildland urban interface, it does really, it's just a line on the map that we focus on. Um, it allows us to uh, provide strategic efforts to both uh, determine risk management and uh, fuel modification for homes. Um, we base everything here based off the counties. Um, determined wildland or urban interface. And with that, what we're going for at each individual residence is dispensable space. Um, and I can't recall who, I think everyone in my, everyone here has already said something from my general speech. But dispensable space is basically that 100 feet that we talked about, um, or that boundary around your home, which in uh, Marin Wood is your entire property, uh, where you either managed, modified, removed, or trimmed the fuel around your property. And that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be vegetation. Um, obviously, we're looking for dead and dying vegetation, but it could also be pertaining to other items around your property that have either accumulated or certain wear out that are considered highly combustible. Um, so, as alluded to by Chief Gray and a few others, um, we do hazard assessments where we come out to each home and we'll actually walk your site and give you a general prescription on well, what needs to be done around the property. The easiest way to find that, other than calling into the fire department, is uh, you can actually just search online San Rafael Vegetation Management, where the second tab that pops up, you click on the first link, it actually goes to a site that doesn't exist. So um, that, you know, that's the easiest way, but if you go to the city site and go through all the department pages, you'll find us. There's a little blue box, you fill it out, and it'll go right to my email. Um, I'll have your name and number and contact information. We'll schedule time to come out. It's actually extremely simple. If I get a phone call from you, take from my card, you can do it that way, you can email me. Uh, we're, we're pretty open, our, our goal is to um, get out and do these inspections. Uh, so the hazard assessment is really focused on us coming out. So those property owners that are in, um, intent on actually modifying the fuel and vegetation around their home. Um, obviously we'll point out areas where you can do the, the first stages of your work, but um, it's, 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 we're there to help you gain compliance um, based on the ordinances and codes that exist. Um, after that, there's our general, you know, kind of knock and talk type inspections where we focus on strategic locations around Marinwood, where we'd actually go and knock on your door and introduce ourselves, very similar to the skit there, and we would uh, request to kind of walk around your property and take a look. If you're 
bring out home, we have a nice form that we've created, which I have a couple copies in back that we'd be generally basing our um, inspection off of. Now, currently, standard file is probably one of the most um, restrictive ordinances in all of Marin County. I highly expect that to change with the way some of the other agencies are uh, talking. But what we'll base all of our most of our inspections here off of is what the state standard is, which is not much different. That's actually what we've modeled our form off of. It's the LE100 form that all the CAL FIRE inspectors uh, use when they go out to home. So we're, we're right on the same page with all of that. The only difference really is how we enforce things like juniper and, and bamboo. Um, but uh, otherwise, moving forward with that, um, yeah, the uh, so uh, there's already been a general push uh, for FireWise here, uh, talking about it, and NCSA 13 has already done some substantial uh, efforts to not only become FireWise, but uh, move forward with that progress. But myself, uh, my colleague Patrick Binardi, we're well versed. We um, attend all the fire safe Marin meetings. We uh, are in close contact with Todd Lando and County Marin, and we um, are your liaison for FireWise. So we are currently trying to get in contact with um, all of the different representatives, represent, uh, representatives of Marinwood in order to begin this FireWise process. It's a generally free process that you're part of already fully capable of doing. And um, it's, it's very easy to do. It's all about getting national recognition and uh, banding together to reduce your risk. Um, so that, that's a, it's, a, it's a very easy program to get. There's a lot of benefits. They're all already listed, so I'm not going to go through all the list of the benefits that um, FireWise offers. Uh, the next thing I really want to focus in, I kind of alluded to it earlier, is the changes that are coming for the wild end of an interface. Um, the writing's on the wall. We all have the lessons learned from what happened last year and uh, the, the changes coming. And some of the biggest changes that are right in front of our face right now that are happening are what PG&E is doing. That's part of the shutoff. Um, so if we haven't already said it enough, Nixle, Alert Marine, and the PG&E alerts. Um, you can go online and sign up for free. PG&E will alert you 48 hours prior to any sort of possible shutoff. That's a, the quickest way to find out if there's any sort of high weather red flag warning coming. Um, now with that, there's the potential that they can shut off the power to a, a large uh, portion of any sort of, uh, any portion of Marin County, as you showed the map to. Um, but what they're doing, as far as their efforts, is they've expanded out their requirements around the power lines. Um, prior to any of these fires, they required somewhere from 12 to 18 inches of clearance. That is now expanded out to uh, 12 feet. So. Whether, what that's gonna look like as they actually start moving forward with that pro program, I don't know. But currently, they're really focusing on the open space and pushing those boundaries out by 12 feet around all power poles and power lines to help protect that infrastructure. Um, you know, it's really the responsibility of the property owner to really focus on what you have growing close to and near combustible power poles. Uh, because if your vegetation manages to threaten that infrastructure, you're, you're just adding the fuel of that fire. Um, a couple other things along with the alerts is they are implementing a heavy weather station um, increase around all of California. And Sandra Fowles already requested three weather stations to be placed on strategic points around the community, um, which hopefully will uh, encompass some sort of camera network um, to add to what the county marine already has. So um, like I said, the majority of my speech was kind of wrapped up in everyone else's. So hopefully you got a lot of information. I brought cards for myself and Patrick Pignardi. Again, those cards are your direct line to get a hold of us. To schedule one of those, um, we call it a hazard assessment, a residential hazard assessment. If you're savvy online, you can do it online. You can just email or any phone number that you have will probably end up right back to my desk no matter what. So thank you so much for uh, offering us to, to be available to you. Any questions? We have about right Yes, I'm uh, Ron Marinoff, the Fire Commissioner for County Service Area 13. That's the 538 homes uh, west of Juvenile Hall. And we need your help and Supervisor Connolly's help to do something with the park and open space people. The current director will not cut the weeds. It was a policy started by his predecessor after 45 years of the county cutting the weeds every year. Upon doing some questioning of that, they said, well, the bird nesting continues until August 1. 
Well, that was 90 days ago, okay? Right now, everybody in this room is the endangered species if we get a 40 mile an hour wind at a fire. It's time to cut the weeds and take away the danger that everybody in Marinwood is facing from a fire with a 40 or 50 mile an hour wind blowing from west to east. Please do what you can to make that agency wake up. And that's completely, completely already noted. So we have that on our list. Um, I'll definitely look into it. Um, obviously, if it's waiting until the next thing ends, then why has it never ended? So I hear that loud and clear. Um, I, as far as parks and open space, county, I, that's just that's that, that avenue I have to go down. I've already reached out to the Parks Department for Marin Woods specifically to follow up on all the projects working on here. Um, Supervisor Connolly definitely expressed all the different efforts that are already being done. Um, so I will follow up to make sure I find out anything that's happening currently and, and what the plans are for, for next season. And that's kind of the mode that we're all in right now is just dialing it all in for next season. Excuse me, sir. You're talking about the meadow in front of the juvenile house. Correct. That's correct. Well, why can't they cut it next week? I, I don't have an answer. Yeah. So how do I follow up yeah. with yeah. that? That's we're going to get up from tomorrow. Thank you very much. Okay, Jeff. You get to introduce a new subject. <laughs> I'm not sure how I get my lucky uh, honor of being the last speaker, but uh, here we are. Um, so my name is Jeff Edwards. I'm uh, one of five watch commanders for the sheriff's office. Uh, I work Sunday through Wednesday in the evening hours. Um, there's 24-hour coverage for watch commanders. Essentially, we run the entire operation of the sheriff's department during the nighttime when uh, our executive staff is at home. So um, I'm not going to talk at you for the next 10 minutes. I'm going to give you a few stats just for the last 90 days here in the, in the area. Um, and then just talk a little bit about our social media uh, platform. How you can, oh, sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, cover the social media platforms that we're using currently to stay in communication with you and then open it up to questions because uh, I find that that usually is the most informative way to, to have this conversation. So, um, Over the last 90 days, just to give you a quick snapshot, Marinwood is a fairly safe community. Not a lot of crime, obviously, which is why y'all live here. Um, to note, over the last 90 days, there's only been uh, three auto burglaries that we had here in the neighborhood, which is actually a pretty good uh, ratio compared to the rest of the county. Um, that's probably one of our number one crimes in the county itself, is property crimes, and usually it's crimes of opportunity, uh, people that leave their cars unlocked at night, uh, windows down, things of that nature. Uh, we've had a few of those as well. Uh, just two in the last 90 days in this neighborhood. Um, we've also had two uh, residential or home burglaries, um, and those actions were both at St. Vincent's uh, over across the highway. So we haven't had, actually had a home burglary here in, in Marino for 90 days or, or more. Um, as far as citations, I know a uh, uh, form of contention we had for a while was the overnight parking on uh, over by the market and on the overpass. Uh, I'm happy to say with the supervisor's help that we uh, have only had to issue one citation for that violation over the last 90 days. Um, in comparison to some of the other areas in the county, that's a fantastic rate. Uh, we seem to be solving the issue uh, with some of the ordinances that have been passed. So uh, it's, it's been a really a, a great relief, I think, to everybody, uh, including ourselves. So. Um, with that, the other thing I'd like to talk about is the sheriff's office is doing a great job. <laughs> we we'll do what we can. Um, really, the other thing that I think it's important, especially with the topic that you've all been talking about mostly tonight, is how we stay in communication with you. Uh, obviously, um, today's environment, social media, is a, is a big thing, and it's kind of the most common platform. Um, for those of you that aren't on social media, um, I believe somebody else brought it up already once before, was the Alert Marin program. Uh, that is the old school reverse 911 system. Uh, it used to be called TENS. Uh, it's now the new updated version of that. So if you have a home phone, some people still have home phones, I know I do. Um, if you go on to alertmarin.org and you register your home phone, 
and you can also register your cell phone. If in the in case of an emergency such as a fire or an earthquake or something of that nature, and we activate that system, it will call your home phone and it'll call your cell phone. We'll give you just a list of you know directions, whether it's an evacuation order, uh, it's an evacuation warning. You know, that's typically what you're gonna see that, that system used for. It's not gonna be an information system telling you, uh, you know, the road's blocked or traffic delays, things of that nature. This is gonna be the, the big red handle has been pulled essentially, and this is the emergency. This is what we want you to do. Your shelter in place, we want you to evacuate, something of that nature. Um, the next one we probably use uh, on an occasion and probably most frequently during the emergencies such as last year's fire. Um, the fire we recently had about almost two months ago now in Lagunitas is Nixle. Um, several agencies use Nixle in different ways. We at the Sheriff's Office believe that Nixle should be used when it's really needed and that's going to be the same manner that Alert Marin is going to be used in is we want you to do something. It's either going to be sheltering in place because there's something going on uh, in the neighborhood, or we want you to leave the neighborhood. And the example of a fire, for you know, to use that. Uh, we're not going to use Nixle typically on a day-to-day -day basis because we don't want it to become something that you see it so often and you start to ignore it. Um, you know, and so we try to use that as, as sparingly as we can when it's really important. The way that we do communicate with you on a pretty regular basis, and we try to do that as much as we can, is through Nextdoor, uh, through Twitter, through Facebook. Um, I think we're even starting to dabble with Instagram for uh, those of you that might also be out there. Um, something to note on uh, Nextdoor specifically, it's been pretty recent where you've actually been able to click a box that will send us a message. Just so you all are aware, when you have a conversation within your community on Nextdoor, we don't see any of the comments, we don't see the conversation. We only see what you, you write specifically in your message and then click the little box that sends it to us. Any responses thereafter from community members, we actually don't see at the moment. So a lot of times we'll get secondary messages saying, how come you haven't responded to these conversations and the things that are going on? And quite simply, it's because we don't see it. Um, and that's the way that Nextdoor is set up, and that's the way that the company is, is purposely set it up. It may change eventually. I kind of hope it does, at least on the ones that we're included in. We don't need to read everything that y'all post. Uh, I live here in Miranda, trust me. I, See enough stuff on my community's uh, next door postings as well. So um, we really do use Twitter quite a bit, you know, for everyday general uh, communication with everyone, and we do respond to those things uh, as well as Facebook. So you know, if you have questions, you have comments, please by all means reach us out. Reach out to us on those uh, platforms, or just call us. You know, and we'll come out and talk to you. We still do that the old school way too. So. Uh, yeah. With that, I don't really have much else to give you because, like I said, I don't want to talk at you. If you have any questions, I'd like to open it up for that, and I'd be happy to try to answer them as best I can. Yes, ma'am. Do you have a phone number? There's a car that's been parked in front of my house for two weeks. Is there a phone number I can call that can tell you if you have licenses from out of town? Yes. Okay. The phone number is 479-2311. Okay. That's our non-emergency number. Yeah. And if you call and just let them know that there's been a car parked in your in front of your house for more than 72 hours, we'll come out and take a look at it. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. Um, Lieutenant Edwards, full disclosure, I'm a Lucas Valley resident, and I'm a little emotional because um, two years ago today, tonight, um, we had the home invasion property. And um, I'm really glad that we stayed here. It's still really hard for my family, but I would like to know how, what else we can do um, to protect ourselves, and I don't mean me personally, I mean our community. I felt a lot of love from our community in Lucas Valley. Um, I felt really supported, so did my children, but it was rough, and I think about it every single day. Luckily, my kids are great, um, and we've moved on from it for the most part, but I was disappointed, not in the Sheriff's Department, but um, I was disappointed that Lucas Valley talked for what felt like a second about doing security cameras in the main entrances to the valley and then that went away because of um, privacy issues and I'm just wondering from the um, standpoint of being a, um, uh, an official entity in our county and in our area what other suggestions you can give us because I sort of feel a little bit like we've drop the ball. I mean, thank God that's not a common thing. Thank God we were the only family and we were fine. 
And the fact that this, I saw that this meeting was scheduled for this night several months ago, and I was like, I have to go to that because, you know, I just, I need to say um, that I appreciate what the Sheriff's Department did for us and what the community has done for us, but I feel like there's more we can do. So I'd love to hear either from you or I'd love to see information disseminated through the Homeowners Association and the, you know, CSC here. Yeah, uh, well, first, I'm glad things are better and that uh, you guys are still safe and, and that we're moving forward with that. Um, no, it's a great question. And, and one of the things I would recommend highly, first of all, is make sure you know who your neighbors are. Um, you know, in today's environment, you know, knowing who your neighbors are a lot of times helps resolve issues right from the get-go. If you don't see, if you see somebody in the neighborhood that you don't recognize, if you know who your neighbors are, you know, that automatically helps out identify whether or not that person is supposed to be in the neighborhood or not and what, what their business is there. So um, security cameras, security systems, obviously that's, that's widely available now. Um, community watch groups is always a, a great thing. Um, you know, neighborhood watch, you know, I know we don't talk about that too often anymore and, and you know, that was a, a big thing in the 80s, but uh, in the 90s, but you know, definitely it's still a, a, a great system and it's a very effective one. Um, you know, I think, not presenting yourself as a, a, an opportunity, quite frankly. The holidays are coming you know, quickly on us, upon us now. And, and one of the things to help prevent crimes of opportunity is not to give that opportunity in the first place. Make sure your porch lights are, are, are working and, and uh, your gates are locking. Um, don't leave things in your car that are visible at night uh, or even during the daytime. So um, you know, just a little bit of prevention and a little bit of awareness with each other and, and the community itself, I think, goes a long way. So. Uh, and by all means, we're always there to come out and help and take a look and see what else we can. Might be able to do to help short your house. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Yeah. In regard to evacuations with wildfire, I know that's a moving target, and there are a lot of variables wind direction and whatever. But that's usually designated for the police and not the firemen. And so, what is your answer as far as the uh, resident would be notified on which direction of an evacuation route he should take? Well, the county has established a mutual threat zone plan, uh, and we actually put it into play two months ago in Lagunitas when we actually did evacuation. We're not going to the whole um, So there are designated areas. If we are to, uh, if we were to order evacuations from the Lucas Valley and the Linwood area, we have designated uh, uh, evacuation centers, uh, locations that are established. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't think of them right now, but. Um, but it's all fire yeah. dependent. Where yeah. the fire is at, where it's going. Right. And, and if something was to change during a fire, uh, such as when in the fire direction, and we, we actually dealt with this in Los Angeles uh, two months ago, uh, we would actually have to go <coughs> where we would go instead. If it wasn't near a community center, we changed it to, say, you know, Smith Branch and McGinnis Park. I mean, we would update that as, as best but we that could. that update, is that through Nextdoor or Alert Marin? That would probably come down Nextdoor and or Alert Marin directly. Okay. Now there are about five minutes left for uh, general questions. But before that, there's something kind of important. Elaine Biantini has been our steering committee, steering committee um, chair for CERT for a long time, and she's stepping down. And so she arranged this tonight. She's going to be on the work goes into these kinds of things and she is so organized. She keeps if you think he's organized with a skip, she's organized. So great. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, okay, there's a, I think maybe four more minutes for questions. Can you just tell us what is Nixle? Yes. What is it? What is Nixel? What is Nixel? Yeah. Uh, Nixel Oh, uh, Nixle is a uh, an alert system. It's another social media platform. Uh, in order to sign up for it, you just go on your cell phone and you dial 888-777. You type in your zip code and you'll get a response back saying you're now signed up for Nixle alerts for this area. Uh, the Sheriff's Office, the Fire Department, uh, the County Operation uh, Office of Emergency Services, and uh, San Rafael Fire, San Rafael PD. PD, everyone that's attached to the zip code here uh, can use that system to alert you. So you may get a Nix alert 
that may not be specifically pertain to Marin Wood because you share a zip code. Right. Uh, it may be across the street in uh, Sierra Club's jurisdiction. But if you just dial triple eight, triple seven, put in your zip code, it'll send you a message back saying you're now signed up for Nixle or to your zip code. And you can do that for any zip code in the United States if you want to. Uh, it doesn't have to just, you, know, you can't just use it for yours. You can use it for, if you have loved ones in other communities, you can do that for them as well, so, okay? You had a question? Um, yes? Uh, I had a question. So, a couple of days ago, we had an active shooter. Um, so, I have kids in the JC school. And um, we, I got that over, I think it was this week, I can't remember this point. Um, and it said, it, it said like, it would, the alert was like, active shooter um, person is not in custody, but it's okay to send kids to school. So, I wasn't sure. I just wanted to know how that. I'm surprised that I didn't come up earlier. Um, <laughs> so, to be clear about the incident that happened, I think you're referring to the one over at Helen Vine? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, just to be clear, that happened at 1.30 in the morning. So, it had no effect on the schools whatsoever at that time. Um, the suspect was actually in custody within an hour after that shooting occurred. Um, so, it never had an effect on any daytime operations. Uh, and quite frankly, we did not put out a Nixle alert um, at the time because we didn't believe there was a threat to the community based on the information we had, and we obviously didn't release that right away for investigative reasons. Um, like I stated earlier, for Nixel, if we thought that there was a threat to the community, to say Marinewood, for example, we would have put out a Nixel alert in a geographic area. We had the ability to kind of basically draw a circle around where we wanted to go and notify you, hey, shelter in place, lock your doors, lock your windows. Uh, we would have locked down the school had it been during the day, something of that nature. Uh, they did just have an incident today in Novato, as an example, um, where they had a uh, stolen car with a couple people in it, right outside of uh, San Ramon High, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. They put a mix alert out as they were involved in that incident, locked the school down while they dealt with that incident, and then as soon as it was safe for everybody to come back out, they put out another alert. So we would do something very similar if there was a threat in the neighborhood and or the schools uh, in the area. So, But just to be clear, like I said, we didn't do a mix alert the other night because we didn't want to wake you up at two in the morning to tell you that something had happened, but everything's okay. Um, and it's okay to go back to sleep. So I hope that makes sense. But Jim, just, yeah, so just to follow up, I think the disconnect, however it occurred, though, was the at large. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We actually, I'm not sure some of the notifications came from the sheriff's office itself. We didn't put out anything until about the time that, uh, well, we knew the suspect was not in the area, and at the point that we knew that is when we started to advise, um, you know. Well, we, you know was apprehended, I yeah, like I said, he was apprehended pretty quickly after the incident happened, and it was actually in Sonoma County. Uh, he fled the area immediately. Uh, we knew that within a very short amount of time. Uh, we were just working on some other investigative things. So had we thought there was an immediate threat to the area, we definitely would have put something out. Yes, sir. Could you adjust the phone number for Nixel again so it doesn't show Yes, sir. Triple eight. Triple seven. Triple seven. It's 888 You don't call it. You send a text message. Yeah, sorry. You send a text message. Did I not say that? Yeah. Yes. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, you send a text message to 888 Yes, ma'am. I have a lot of friends on the Alert Marin will. I'm not entirely sure about Nixel, to be honest with you. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if they have that author uh, authorization to do that, much like an Amber Alert or the school or everything. Um, I don't know if Nixel does or not, but you know, I'll find out and uh, we will try to let everybody know uh, somehow about that. Okay. That's a great question. Thank you. Yes. I was just going to say, Dixie School did go on lockdown. Yeah, we went on lockdown. On Monday they did? Yeah. Mm. Okay, that had nothing to do with us. I wanted to on lockdown. Well, no, I'm not saying you guys told them to, but they did not have the information that it was like an all clear. So we got th three or four different emails from the principal, and one of them was, this is happening, but we're safe. 
we've been told. The next one was we've gone ahead and every recess, lunch is inside, all of the doors are locked. Yeah, I'm not really sure why that happened because he was in custody literally around by 2.30 a.m. I mean, so. better to be safe than sorry if they didn't have any updated information, and I'm really glad they made that choice, but just so you know. Yeah, I'll follow was, up on that because yeah. they should have had that information long before. So That's what I was thinking. Yeah, because we yeah. were doing social media messaging mm -hmm. and press releases and press conferences right around 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning. So yeah. um, I'm not sure how they got it. I'll look into that. Okay, one more question. Anybody? Yeah. Okay. Yay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for my surprise, Orkin. <laughs> I want to thank all the wonderful speakers tonight. This has been very special. And thank you for attending. And thank you all, Redwood Cert volunteers, Bruce King, Cameron Case, Dave Miles, Diane Ayers, and myself. <laughs> if you want to have contact info on our speakers or hear more about next steps, be sure and sign up on the registration sheet that's at the registration table over there. Um, if you are here to renew your cert, cert uh, recertify, go to the back of the room and see Maggie Lane. And on your way out, pick up some of the wonderful brochures and flyers on how to be prepared. My favorite is called Grab and Go, which is someone else's personal grab and go. I adapted it to me, and then I timed myself to, to see if I could grab everything in on the list in 10 minutes. I did, but then I realized I'd forgotten all my clothes. <laughs> That's what you learn. Remember, you need to be prepared for yourself and your family, and then see about help neighbor, helping neighbor. Good night. Best wishes for a peaceful end to the fire season.